better help better help it's all about that mental, mental health, health. <laughs> damn that was fire that was really good if you guys haven't heard of better help my <laughs> friends if you're looking for online professional therapists to be there for you 24 7 at the comfort of your home you have to try better help i think that sounds so convenient because i'm a busy guy and i've never been to therapy but dadgummit i've been curious about it oh you should try it so I would love to go to BetterHelp and just have someone to talk to about anything, whether that be anger issues, depression, stress. It's been a crazy time that we've been living in. We've been locked indoors. And sometimes we might go through things that we've never felt before, maybe a little anxiety, maybe a little depression, maybe anger issues I've never had to deal with. So something like this, having a, a, a professional counselor would be great to talk to. So I want you guys to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash foods. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Once again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash foods. Oh my god, what's up y'all? Welcome back to Dudes Behind the Motherfucking Fools. What up you sexy motherfuckers? I'm Tim Chantarongsu. And I'm Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm David So, your local chubby Korean man. Oh man, uh, your, your, your neighborhood chubby Korean man. We are sipping on soju. Um, I, think, I think you're looking a little red there, my guy. Let me tell you something. Me liver cannot process... The alcohol. You know, I only found out recently through my friend, maybe making like a year or two ago, mm -hmm. where I was like, damn, people really do love drinking alcohol, but they really have to fight that that feeling that you get when you drink and you're a little woozy and weird. Mm. And he's like, I don't feel that at all. I was like, what? What do you mean? He was like, yeah. He was like, you you turn red because your liver can't process the alcohol like other people do. Is that what it is? Yeah. So it's like, um, it's like so we... we <laughs> Listen, I am no doctor. <laughs> I am no scientist. But it's something about like we can't break down some type of en we don't have some type of enzyme or some shit that breaks down the alcohol in our liver that causes us to be red. I see. So I always assume the way that I felt being drunk is how everybody else felt. But everybody else is just having a good fucking time. Mm. I, when I'm like plastered, my head starts to throb a little bit. Mm. I feel a little woozy, a little <clears throat> weird. So the level of alcohol that's in me right now where I turn red, I feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it only takes about like two thirds of a bottle of soju. Yeah, I'm pretty much there. Mm -hmm. And this is the level of drunk that I like being. This yeah. is where I don't make mistakes. <laughs> this is where I'm a little fun, yeah. a little crazy. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not going to go ahead and make out with some random person. Yeah, I I definitely used to do that a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would I would always make out with people. Um, when Can't I was because of COVID now, and yeah. also you're married, <laughs> and and also that yeah, but mainly COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not much of a germaphobe, but even when I was single, I didn't like it when some when people get drunk and they'll be a little too close to my face. <laughs> I, I didn't like whether it was a guy or a girl or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just didn't like whenever somebody gets drunk, they always kind of talk like an inch away from your <laughs> fucking face. <laughs> How have you been? And I'm like, dog. Hey man, let's talk about this, bro. Talking about free food and free drinks. I was so mad because you invited me to this thing in Vegas. Oh my lord. And I couldn't go. Because I had to go to a pinche wedding in Vegas. Freaking J.R. Aquino. <laughs> J.R. Aquino had a wedding in Vegas at the exact same time where you were invited to a like all fucking include. Tell us about it, please. Oh, let me tell you this. So whenever I get invited to these like food events, right? There's always I always want to go with people who really enjoy food. I know that I have a lady that I love, mm -hmm. right? But she was the last person I wanted to go with. <laughs> Not because I knew, I, I wanted to take her because I wanted to spend time with her and we get to be in this hotel. So we had this really great deal with Caesars Palace. It was, I got three nights stay at Nobu. Mm. Sweet, amazing sweet, by the way. Shout outs to Nobu. Yeah. So there's a Nobu, there's Nobu rooms in Caesars Palace. Inside Caesars Palace. Okay, okay. Amazing, mm. right? <clears throat> This event was the Taste of Nobu, right? Nobu is a very, very uh, famous uh, sushi slash Japanese chef. Mm -hmm. Does a lot of stuff, you know, very creative. This was an event. I believe the tickets were close to four hundred dollars each per person. Damn. Right, and you're like, well, that's a lot of food. However, or that's a, that's a pretty heavy price. But I'm talking about caviar. Mm. I'm talking. By the way, this is 
serve yourself, get up, eat all you can eat. A buffet? A Nobu buffet? A Nobu buffet, right? With unlimited drinks at the bar and served at your table. All mixed drink cocktails, all included in the price. What? Drink as much as you fucking want. Oh. <laughs> Amazing. The drinks, the mixed drinks were fucking, and by the way, they didn't shy away from that of fucking alcohol. You had about two drinks, you're pretty much smashed. Man. Okay. Ramen station. What? Right? Chashu pork. Oh. All these different sides. Right next to the ramen station, kushiaki grow, meaning skewers. Oh. Wagyu skewers, bro. I love skewers and I love wagyu. So fatty and decadent and what? rich, you have one skewer, you're done. What the heck? I ate two because it was expensive. I wanted to eat more. Yeah. They had pork. They had chicken, whatever. Next to that, sushi bar. Little mini uni bowls with ikura. What? I love ikura and uni. Little uh, red snapper nigiri. We're talking about toro, tuna belly. Oh. Nigiri, all you can eat. Eating as much as you want. The next station over, caviar. I... I really like caviar, dog. Taco, like these little fried wontons with like caviar inside with like this little avocado salad inside. Tuna with caviar on top of it. Delicious, dude. One of the best food experiences I've ever had in my life to that type of extent. And I brought my lovely, lovely fiance with me. And she <laughs> didn't really um <laughs> enjoy it like I did. <sighs> and I was like, I wish Tim was here. I was so mad, dog. Like, I really... <laughs> really wanted to go um and if i wasn't at the wedding it would have been fucking you and me in vegas cuddling in nobu <laughs> getting full and plastered at this shit like crazy Ugh. Ah. So fucking oh, and then after that, the next day they gave us a voucher to go eat at Giada De Laurentiis. Okay, Giada De Laurentiis. If you guys don't know, she is a Food Network uh, star, Italian food. She, oh, the super pretty girl. Yeah, she kind of looks like a bird with a big head. Yeah, but very pretty. I only <laughs> say that only because I'm trying to be funny. But I, I would, I have definitely thought very naughty thoughts about big headed her. women are always uh, uh, hot, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big head, tiny little hands. I love it. <laughs> She had this delicious fresh made pasta. It's not gnocchi, but it looks like gnocchi. Yeah. But it's fresh made pasta in this pesto sauce, right? Typ oh, the ones that look a little worms. Yes. And let me tell you something. I typically am not a big fan of pesto. I think it's, it tends to be a little overpowering. For I me. love pesto. This pesto pasta, <laughs> amazing. Ugh. Did you know there's fucking cheese in pesto? Yes, it's Parmesan cheese. <laughs> you didn't know that? Dog, for the longest time, I was like, this shit green. It got to be from vegetables. <laughs> so I was like, this got to be from herbs. It's basil, olive oil, a little chili flakes, some Parmesan. Maybe maybe if you want a little uh, Pecorino Romano. I used to order pesto pasta because I was like, <clears throat> I, I, I want something that gives me the uh, like that make that like that gives me like a little decadent flavor, but I was like I don't want anything creamy because I'm trying to avoid dairy. So I would order pesto. There's so much cheese in there, bruh. Dude. Until I googled pesto, I was like, what? There's so much cheese. So <laughs> <laughs> Why so much cheese? <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then so David, I was like, so I'm like at our little Airbnb in Vegas because. We didn't stay at a hotel because, you know, we had the baby and we didn't want the baby around like cigarette smoke and people. So we got an Airbnb like on the outskirts of Vegas, which was really close to the wedding. So it was super convenient. But like, you know, the whole time Dave was like sending me pictures of all this shit that he's eating. I was like, oh, oh, there's also a restaurant in the Red Rock Casino near Summerlin called Osteria Folera or Floralia. OK. Osteria Folala. Look it up. It's actually something that was on my bookmarks for a long time. But that's a re that's a restaurant. That uh, Bart and Gio like to take everybody to, right? Okay. I had it once. When I got there the first time, I was in a rush. I was eating real quick, so didn't really get to taste what I wanted to, mm. what I was eating. Went back there recently, went for their brunch. My God, one of the best Italian restaurants I've ever had. Word like that? And, you know, the, the, the food that actually led a huge, left a huge impression on me, obviously their car carbonara was really good, was this cinnamon roll that they had. Mm. They did this cinnamon roll. It, it Like, typically what happens when food when somebody tries to reinvent something that's already bomb as fuck, mm. it's usually a miss. Mm -hmm. It's like you ain't you ain't gotta reinvent the fucking chick, chicken McNugget. Yeah, you know what I mean. You don't gotta. It's already perfect. Right. And I think cinnamon buns are damn near perfect as mm -hmm. it is. This person redid it. The best cinnamon bun I've ever had in my life. Really? So fucking good. Damn, dude. like that. That fucking good. Wow. It it just just 
crazy. I dream about that shit, dude. <laughs> so fucking good. There's cool. a restaurant in Vegas <clears throat> that it was, this is one of my first ever um, bougie trips to Vegas where, you know, when you're like 21 to, I don't know, 25, you go to Vegas because you're like, I'm going to go to clubs and I'm going to fucking just like get trashed for three days and then that's it, right? And on one of my first ever like chill trips to Vegas where I went with somebody like one of our homies, uh, this dude named uh, Brian, who had money, he was like, I'm going to show y'all like a different side of Vegas, you know? So he took us to this restaurant called Milo's. This is the first ever restaurant where- um, Greek? Yes. Uh, and it was, it used to be in the Cosmopolitan, but it's switched now. I think it's in, um, I think it's in um, the Venetian now. And um, this was the first ever restaurant I went to. They were like, hey, you can't wear your hats. <laughs> and oh. me and Rick were like- Oh, 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 never we, we've never experienced nothing like this before. No hats. Excuse me. Yeah. So we took our hats off, went into this restaurant, and um, first time like Rick had like grilled octopus that he really fucked with. Oh. It was like it was like a fire like grilled octopus is fucking amazing. Yes, dude. especially when they do it right, right. Oh. So it was like grilled octopus. We had like a fire fucking ribeye. Um, like a whole, I forget which fish it was, but it was bomb. We had like a little, like a delicious, like watermelon and feta tomato salad. Bomb. Everything was bomb, right? And then he took us to like this, uh, a little bar where it was like a little, like in the cut bar, but it was like, you could tell everybody there had money. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 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 and yeah. And this is yeah, the first yeah, time yeah, being yeah. in a restaurant where I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is, this is my first time in Vegas where I'm like, oh, oh, people, oh, this is like money here, you know? Hello. Because my dog, like, I remember being in Vegas, right? And if we're going to talk about, like, food and Vegas, I remember going to Vegas and and going with, like, Rick and Petey Flo and, and Super Ego and, and barely us having enough money to get a fucking room at the Luxor. <laughs> dog, those days, huh? Oh, man. And, like, where we were, like, Seven oh, people in a room. Let's yeah. go. Four of us in a room, and we're like, "Oh, we're ready for Vegas. We got this bottle of Smirnoff. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go." The shittiest fucking. Hot <laughs> so like, we put the bottle of Smirnoff in the mini fridge. What's up, bitches? Let's fuck, right? <laughs> <laughs> so like a bottle of E and J. <laughs> yeah, dog. We out here, and then I remember having such a, a, a like no money in Vegas, dog. Literally every. Every day that we were in Vegas, we were eating just McDonald's. And like, yes, we love McDonald's, but I remember we could only afford McDonald's. And then I think one homie, it might have been Eric, had enough money to get like some carne asada fries. And we were like, oh my God, I'm so jealous. Because he he could afford Damn, his carne asada fries. Bro, oh, dog, we, we were broke as That's shit. That's some next level broke. We, yeah, and it was like, you know, you go to Vegas now and it's like you expect to spend like, you know, a few hundred on some dinners and then like alcohol. It's going to be a few racks A couple you racks, yeah, yeah, you know, just on like food and shit. And then, but like, back then it was like, yo, we, we, we can barely afford this room. We have our fucking schmearing off. And like now we're just going to McDonald's every day and like let's see if we can get some get some ladies to come to the room. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then that's, that's a very hard task to do when you have zero money. Oh, let me tell you this, bro. Quick story. If anybody who listens to my podcast, you've heard this story, but we're gonna tell you again on this podcast because David hasn't heard this story. Um Me, I'll, and I'll make it short, but basically me and PD Flo, we 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 ran into a couple ladies at the pool. And um Ooh. And and they were we, we everybody was vibing and they were like hey let's you know we we exchanged numbers and um they're like let's get some dinner we're like cool and they uh, texted us a sushi place that they wanted to eat at we're like cool so we went to get this, some sushi at like it was a it was a place like attached to a casino I forget and um and if I was broke I'd been pissed well here's they're the like, thing let's right do sushi I'm like fuck you bitch well nowadays bro here's the thing right nowadays <clears throat> and like you know as an older man if if an attractive woman in Vegas is like, hey, let's get dinner. Of course, I'm going to pay for it. Mm. Of course. Because I'm in Vegas and I'm trying to smash, right? Yes. Um, and it's like a date, right? But funny as shit, we're all having a good time, laughing, eating, drinking. The bill comes and me and Peter are like, all right, how you guys want to do this? Uh, oh my God! How, how you guys? You guys want to do like uh, like a like a fifty fifty? <laughs> Who's uh, who are you gonna do? And then they were no! like, they, they were like, oh, and then like I never saw them again. <laughs> oh my 
my god, bro, that shit gave me goosebumps right now. <laughs> It's the worst because we had no idea. And high key, oh us, no, us being like fucking twenty one, barely turning twenty one, like twenty one, twenty two. Um, we left that night after the dinner, being like, I think they wanted us to pay. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> the audacity, yeah, right. Of these women, they are not independent, where they can't pay for their own bills. <laughs> Who in the fuck is this? Just clueless. My word. But like, of course. Oh god, that shit hurts. Yeah, even like in Ve- of course in Vegas they wanted us to pay. Like it's Vegas. That's you know why they saying? invited you out to eat because yeah. they wanted the free meal. And they and look to be to be fi- look and look if we paid for the food we probably would have ended up kicking it after we probably would have smashed. One hundred percent. Um, but I think if there was a just a, something we didn't understand back then as as young twenty one year olds, um, we just didn't we didn't know and uh, you know we asked them like what y'all want to do and we split the bill and. That was that. Never heard. That's of fucking ever. hella funny, dude. Mm-hmm. This is when, you know when you're young too, when you have absolutely no money, how you view a menu is completely different. Mm. Like I still remember when I first came to Los Angeles. Uh, so I, I came to Los Angeles with damn near no money, mm-hmm. right? I was broke. I was like what twenty four at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was a year out of college at that. No, yeah, I was about a year out of college because around like twenty three. I still wasn't graduated, but I only had a few more units left because I was a, a double major, double major with like a few minors. Mm-hmm. Because that's that's not impressive. I just had a lot of. I was just in college for a long time. Um, <clears throat> poor as shit. When I first came to LA, I had, I think I had maybe like a couple hundred bucks in my bank account. Mm. I sold everything that I owned. Mm. So I literally sold every single fucking Jordan shoe, whatever I had, to pay for all the stuff that I needed: camera equipment. Um, in case money I needed to shoot stuff, uh, a few months of rent or whatever. So I moved in with my cousin, and he covered a majority of the rent. I, I had to pay like maybe 300 bucks a month. Mm. And then my parents uh, drove me to L.A. in their truck, and I had this box spring and this mattress, and I got this desk from Walmart that cost 40 bucks. It was like a Black <laughs> Friday sale. I, I put it in there, and every day for a year, <clears throat> I just sat in that room, and I wrote vlogs or com- social commentary shit and mm-hmm. sketches every fucking day and I never left that room. Mm. But one of the biggest things that I remember was the things that I ate. Mm. It's because I only ate stuff that I could afford. Mm-hmm. And that was it. It was mainly ramen, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? And when I wanted to treat myself, there was this restaurant out in Pasadena called Matsuri. Matsuri was like my treat mm. if I did well. And I remember the first check that I got from YouTube AdSense was like 500 bucks. Mm. And I was like, damn, I'm balling. <laughs> you all don't even know. $500? I'm about to fucking wild out. Yeah, yeah. Right? And especially it was great at the time because it took a couple months for me to actually get a paycheck. Mm-hmm. And that $500, I went to Mott City Restaurant. And I remember, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to order what I want. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to order the fucking cheap rolls just because that's all I could afford. And I was super happy. I was like, dude, I get to try all this shit that I wanted to try that I never got to before mm-hmm. because of how fucking broke I was. Yes, bro. And there's a certain point when you get money. And obviously, too, I'm not reckless with my spending. I don't really spend much on anything aside mm-hmm. from food. So, like, I'll look at food, and now I get to look at a menu and go, you know what? I want to try this versus can I afford this? Bruh, that's when I... So, I I got low-key chubby when I got money because... High-key fat for me. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, because what happened was, you know, and I'm sure it was the same situation, Um, you know... My look, okay, so look, like you know, growing up, of course, we didn't have a lot of money, right? But my mom always made sure the food was delicious, even if it was cheap, right? Yeah, but then I grew up, you know, loving fucking like the Food Network shows. I used to watch Emerald Lagasse, oh, yeah, bam, bam, and I used to watch all these food shows. And I think one of the reasons why I want to try so much food is because growing up, I would see these food shows and I'd be like, man, this is all shit I've never heard of, mm-hmm. things I, I could never afford to eat, and even when I was getting older I was like I can't afford to eat these bougie restaurants and then when I finally was getting money I, and 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 even look and I'm gonna say even like my my time at CPK really helped opened up my um, my mind to different types of food because it was like um, like CPK was probably the first time I really started like eating like hummus because it was one of their appetizers you know what I'm saying by the way don't shit on CPK Either. Uh, CPK's C- fire. CPK's cauliflower pizza, by the way, yes, is better than the original crust. I agree. Um, How fucking good is it? Dude? Oh, bro, and CPK, like, not gonna lie, even though they fired me, <laughs> CPK um, has always kind of done really well with their um, 
their fusion recipes and shit. Like they used to have. This is so ahead of the game. I feel right. CPK dog. They they discontinued it years ago. They had a Peking duck pizza. Oh, it was pieces of duck. Um, with scallions, scallions, hoisin sauce, hoisin sauce, and it was fucking delicious. Oh, I, I mean, what's how can you go wrong? Yeah, bro, and they they're always kind of experimenting with shit. They had a they had like a Thai pizza, which was like a peanut sauce base uh, with chicken and carrots. I feel like if an Italian person walked into a CPK, <laughs> they kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> what is a pizza? Huh? <laughs> you have a pick and a taco on a pizza. <laughs> you got the. But uh, how do you say? I was gonna just start cussing in Spanish. You got the pinche chinos <laughs> recipes on the pizza. <laughs> it- Italian people get hella mad when you fuck with their with their pizza and pasta, man. I think Italian people are 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 they 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 hold their food as dear to them as much as Asian people do. You know what I'm saying? Which is great. Which is yeah. great. But yes, yeah, so CPK really helped kind of like I feel like open my eyes to to different kinds of food and shit. Um, and like the bougier aspect mm. of things, right? Like, um, you know, fucking. Not that hummus is bougie, but like, oh, I mean, hummus with like fucking like. Oh, pe- hummus was considered bougie when you're a broke little ghetto kid. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'd never heard of hummus. Yeah. Like, what, what is, the fuck is this? What the fuck? Hummus? Exactly. Yeah. Right? So then I'm at CBK, I'm trying these different things. And then, so when I would go to now, when I'm eating at like, I can afford to eat at these different restaurants. Now, this is the first time. And I, and I mind you, as, as a server at CBK, there's a, a step. Um, of of things that you offer, right? You get there, you give them the menu, you offer an appetizer, you and then it's the main course, and then after the main course, you offer dessert. I was never a dessert person at restaurants. Um, you know, eating with my family, we never got dessert. You know I what I'm saying? I got dessert only recently because the lady has a sweet tooth. <laughs> yeah, Not that big of a sweet tooth guy. I could end the meal without dessert every time. I, I'm always, you know, I think from my years of, of being a server at CPK, now I kind of open my mind to desserts because like, because desserts can be really tasty. Because it was like, save room for dessert. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. I did not. <laughs> like, I fucking went to town. Sometimes I do now. And oh. um, and so when I got money, Bullshit. I was like, yo, I'm going to take, I'm going to get two appetizers. Main course. Yo. Drinks. Desserts. Hey, big facts, right? I think the biggest factor to me actually making money was when I got appetizers. Yes. Because before it's like, yo, I'm not actually adding another 30 bucks to this meal. Exactly. We gonna have the fucking main course. That's it. And can I get seven waters? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to walk away a little full. Yes. But now it's like, oh, we'll order these appetizers because I want to taste it and then I'll take it home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Never before, dude. Now if I'm getting, if I'm, I'll eat I'll eat the bread and the appetizers because I'm like, if I'm full, I'm, I'll get the main course. I'll take that shit home. Sometimes when I order food, I feel like weird if I don't get an appetizer with it. I'm like, dog, I, same. I need, I need an appetizer. If everyone at the table doesn't want an appetizer, I'm like, let me get this for the table. Yeah. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I do too. Yeah. Like, no, I, I was like, no, we're, we're gonna, I'll get it and then you guys can try it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. And you know what I do now, dog? And what I was doing for years when I got money is like, because I know I'm the only one that wants to try everything. I'm like, I got this, y'all. <laughs> I'm the one ordering all the appetizers. Don't trip, I got this. You know what actually saved a lot of you young people that you guys don't even fucking know about? <laughs> is when you have that one rap scallion in the group that doesn't want to pay for the fucking meal. Mm. And they pretend like they don't know what tax and tip are. Uh. Because you guys have Venmo and Cash App. Because mm. now you could break it down with the phone mm-hmm. and then send everybody the bill and say, hey, this is what you owe. <laughs> right. There was a dude. In Sacramento, that was notorious for this shit, all right? I'm going to just call him Gabby. Okay. <laughs> Which is very similar to his actual name. We are friends for a long time. Yeah. You bitch motherfucker. You know you used to do this. <laughs> this bitch made motherfucker. Every time we would, and we, one of my friends, Kathy, she was always super good at just covering people, right? Mm. She was always a hustler, whether she was working a part-time job, made money on the side or whatever, mm. and she never made a big deal about the bill. But whenever we would go out to eat, there would always be one motherfucker mm-hmm. that would pretend like number one they already paid mm-hmm. or they put in enough money but they would just throw in like five bucks even though the meal that he owed was like 18 or 19 bucks mm-hmm. and then we would calculate it and we're like hey we're short like 13 dollars mm-hmm. like 14 bucks this dude over here every time the bill would come out suddenly he's looking for signs in the sky <laughs> you know every time it came short kathy would cover him up I would get so fucking pissed. And this guy's like, oh, I, I already paid. It's like, no, no. You put in five bucks, you fucking dick. Yeah. You still owe 14 extra dollars. And then tip. And tip. I would hate it when he would come by. <clears throat> I got to a point in my life, um, you know, because I, I think, like, after high school, there was points where everybody was trying to do these fucking, like, 12 people group dinners, mm. right? And I got to a point where I had to tell people, like, they'd be like, yo, I'm having a dinner for whatever, whatever, like, 
this weekend and I'd be like, how many people? I'm like, I don't know, like seven to 10. I'm like, if it's more than four, I'm not going. <laughs> you can't talk to everybody. Right. It's, it's, it's so pointless. Yeah. Because you only end up talking to the person right in front of you or right next to you. And then at the end of the night, the fucking bill comes and it's a whole ass ordeal. Oh, you know, unless, unless like, look, you got a fucking, and that's why it's different when you got money to pay for everybody. That's different. Yeah. Cause now it's like, if I'm doing some shit like that, I'm paying for everybody and I'm, I got my section and I'm like, and I'm going around to the whole table and I'm trying to talk to everybody. Right. But it's like, bruh, when you want to have all these fucking people there for your birthday and then we're all paying and it's like this huge struggle at the end and you're literally just talking to the person next to you, it's all just pointless. You it's know? 100% pointless. And I really do agree with that because that's <laughs> why like birthday events are so awkward because it's like, yo, I'm throwing this birthday dinner. It's like just throw a party then. Right. Right. Because then we could just walk around and mingle and then we'll drink and then do whatever. Yeah. Because at this point, what are we doing here? We're sitting here. I'm only talking to the person in front of me and the two other people. Who I don't even know. Yes. Oh. I hate that shit the most. And I'm finding out stuff about them that I don't care about. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, I'm struggling. You know, whatever. I just lost my job. I'm like, cool. I could give a fuck less. Mm -hmm. What are you eating today? <laughs> but it's just always awkward. That's why sometimes I don't like... Um, I like weddings where I know the people versus when I don't know them because I'm always at a table and I'm just sitting here talking to these people who I don't give a fuck about. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a gamble because some of them might be fun. Some of them are fucking weird as shit. Mm -hmm. And typically with my lovely fiance, who I love very much, <laughs> many of times have I gone to her friend's wedding <laughs> and these people were hot trash. <laughs> They can't, they can't hold a conversation to save their fucking life. There was one we were just talking about recently because Mary was invited to like six weddings. Yeah. And I literally told her, I'm only going to the ones that are important to you. <laughs> like everything else, I don't. You need to figure out who who these important people are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she once took me to a wedding, bro. Nightmare. Mm. First of all, we show up to this wedding, right? We're driving up and we see the bride and groom walk out and everybody's taking photos. Okay. And I look at Mariel and I go, I believe the wedding has ended. <laughs> and she goes, no, 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 it's not. And I'm like, I'm 100% sure once those bells ring and they're walking out to the front steps, the wedding is done. Right. And she looked at her invitation and she was like, oh, we came here for the reception time. So she missed the whole wedding. I was like, okay, cool. We go into this wedding. And so if you guys don't know, if you grew up in a Korean Christian household, typically the cheapest way to do it is a few hundred bucks or a thousand dollars to give to the church and they'll throw your wedding for you. Oh, really? It's very, very fucking cheap. All you have to do is pay for the food and pay for the staff. Okay. And that's about it. And you get to use all the facilities in the church because you're a member of the church. Mm. This wedding was hot garbage. God was pissed. <laughs> Show up. The worst situation ever. Half the people there weren't even the girl's friends. Mm. All old church members. Oh, no. 70 years old, 60 years old. At the reception? At the reception. The food, buffet style, all cold Korean food. Oh, no. Here's the worst part. Speakers busted completely. So when they were talking in the mic, it just kept breaking in and out. Another thing, no music. At all? At all. Why? Here's the other worst part. No alcohol. Oh, my God. No alcohol. No music. <laughs> Old Korean people. <laughs> and I sat there pissed. And Mariel's looking at me. She goes, you want to leave? I was like, you fucking think? Yeah. Let's get the fuck out of here. She was so apologetic. She goes, I will never invite you to one of these weddings again. Dog, how do you have a wedding without music? Um, I, so there, when I, when I had my wedding, one of the, the two things that were very important to me were the food and the music. And the alcohol. How amazing was your wedding? It was so fucking fun. My wedding is the best wedding of all time. <laughs> like, it was so fun. It was an event to remember. It was almost not even for you guys. It was for, like, for us. Uh, 100%. It was great. Well, look, it was it was so lit. I want First of all, I wanted to make sure, right, that there was free alcohol. Food was great. The food oh, the food was one of my, like, my biggest thing. Um, So... What I didn't know going into it is that these venues, they'll tell you, okay, like it costs this much. Let's say like it's like twenty thousand for the venue, and then but then they'll be like, oh, but you also have to use our food and bar, and then that's another like twenty thousand, depending on where you go, right? Um, so I'm gonna tell y'all this. Mine was a, a little more than that, but like, but but I wanted to make sure the food 
was bomb you know what i'm saying beautiful so we tried all the fucking like appetizers we chose each one because i wanted to make sure that at the very least the food was fire the churro ice cream oh oh and here's oh th- so that the ice cream wasn't from the venue oh that was f- fire so my homegirl ashley who you've met or chateria oh super cute yes yeah. super amazing oh, Ashley's so super cute. fun she's so cool so she was um, um my plug for a lot of the desserts and um we wanted to have some like you know uh some ice cream that kind of related to me. So we had some Thai iced tea ice cream. And um, what did you just say? It was the the churro and yes. the horchata. Oh, horchata. Yes. oh, yes. We had all types of like desserts and everything was just bomb. And I made sure like the drinks were so strong. So check this out. What's funny is, um, you know, after the actual wedding uh, ceremony, there was a good like, you know, and I didn't know this until we had the wedding, but like you, you can you can choose um when you take your photos and all the planning of it and uh and I'll finish telling you about it right after this break <laughs> Hey, Tim, hmm. what do you think about mental health? I think it's important, and I don't think we talk about it enough. Have you heard of BetterHelp? I sure have. BetterHelp is fantastic. For my people out there who are looking for professional therapists 24-7 that you can contact, BetterHelp just might be for you. I know a lot of you out there might feel a little weird meeting somebody in person because you've never tried therapy before. Well, guess what? You can do it with BetterHelp, and if you don't like the counselor that you started off with, guess what? It's not like a like a OJ Simpson glove. Sometimes it just it just might not fit. Right. And if it don't fit, you must call BetterHelp. <laughs> Go to betterhelp.com slash foods because you can get help on so many things. I've never been to therapy, but I've always been curious. And for someone like me who's trying it out for the first time, I think this would be great because I mean you can send a message to your counselor at any time. I'm a busy guy, so that's helpful. Um you can find the particular expertise you need online so you don't limit yourself to the counselors located near you. Um, and I think that's just lit. I'm a busy guy and I would love to experience some type of counseling. Just I, Sometimes I just want somebody to talk to mm-hmm. about certain things, whether that be depression, stress, anxiety, anger issues, family conflicts. I got a new family now, so this would come in handy. Yeah. And yeah. I think for all y'all who want to try it, who are listening to us, we got a special treat. All you got to do is get... All you got to do is go to BetterHelp.com slash foods and you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting, one more time, BetterHelp.com slash foods. So join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash foods. So... We, we had the ceremony, and then in between the ceremony and the reception, we were just like taking pictures with the family and shit like that, and it, it, it went way longer than we expected, the picture time, but in, in that time, there's like, oh, okay, yeah, open bar, fucking get your cocktails, yes. and then so after like an hour of taking pictures, I went upstairs just to check on my guests, and fucking um, uh, Brian Puspos and J.R. Aquino, um, like I ran into them, and they're like, bro... When is the reception? We're so drunk. <laughs> These drinks are so strong. So to that. So here's some. I mean, you've probably heard this story too, especially because uh, Wayne Brady was on your your podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Wayne Brady originally was supposed to do the the wedding ceremony. He yeah. was supposed to what do you call it? Delegate? I don't know what. The um, 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 uh, 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 he was supposed to um. Marry us. Officiate the wedding. Officiate, thank you. Yeah. He was supposed to officiate the wedding, and I was his his backup. And he gave me a heads up. Mm-hmm. But I assume it sounded like he was going to make it, but it was very last minute that he decided not to. Yeah. Now, mind you, at this time, I didn't know Chia very well at all. <laughs> right. Right. I met her once. She was super fun, yeah. super cute, super, super hilarious. I was like, cool, that's as much as I know about her. <laughs> so this was hard. But I really got that. I wrote a bunch of stuff. I was going through dress. And I usually never have to write anything because if I marry somebody, they're a homie and I know them. Right. This one, I had to write some shit. Mm. I literally go up and I go, you know what? Fuck this iPad. <laughs> I just left it. And I just started freestyling something. But the cool thing was uh, it was I made it short. Mm-hmm. I made it sweet because it was hot as fuck up there. Mm-hmm. And I was looking around. Everybody was sweating. I'm like, yeah. we're going to make this fast and quick yes. and meaningful. I don't even remember anything that I said. 
but I heard it was good. It, it was, was great. <laughs> I, I don't really remember either. I remember you kept it short and sweet. It, yeah, because so, uh, the wedding was out towards Malibu, um, like little outdoor thing looking over the beach. It's super pretty at the Bel Air Bay Club. Oh, beautiful. Ah, so nice. Very expensive. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, you did great. I, I, I mean, of course, and then me and she have talked about this, how like if you were to write, if you were to officiate now, it would have been different because now you and Chia are actually friends. Yeah. You know her a little more. You guys have a relationship. Oh, I, I fucking love Chia, dude. She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So she, now I, I would I would definitely have geared it more towards like a lot of the interesting <laughs> stories that you guys have between right, each right. other. Yeah. But what you did was great. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. went off kind of what you saw on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that I could see. It's like, oh shit, I don't know too much about her. But, but yeah, man, it was short and sweet. It was great. And um, you know, and I had so much fun, bro. Like I would like Honestly, sometimes I just I want to just have another wedding because I had such a good time. When he says his drinks were strong, right? We already know that Long Island iced teas are strong. <laughs> his fucking Long Island iced Tim, as I called it, <laughs> I had one plastered. I so I I chose drinks and I um I googled drinks online that actually um uh kind of had ingredients that were on the theme of like me and Chia. I forgot what the fuck I did, but um. It was something that was like something Thai something, and then I I forget. But. Long Island ice ties, whatever it was, <laughs> it got me plus. I actually got so drunk. Oh, my ties, my ties, something like that. Yeah, I got so plastered in the beginning. I had to go to the room and fall asleep a little bit and come <laughs> back out, cause I, I cause I drove, so I had to sober up. Oh, that's so funny because I didn't know that because and there was definitely a a point where me and Chia went into the the like the quiet room. Just to fucking kick it a little bit, and you were there with Mario. Yeah. So I, by the time you came in, I was kind of sobering up already. Mm. But you and I already smashed, and we took a photo. I don't remember taking that photo, but we <laughs> took a photo together, and I was completely obliterated because mm. there were so much drinks. Yeah. And shout outs to Dumb, by the way. <laughs> this motherfucker, dude. <laughs> so came to the wedding, and we talked about it on my podcast too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He was like, I didn't know I was supposed to let the, you know, let the bride and groom know that I have a guest. It's like, dumb. What the fuck are you talking Okay, look, to be fair, okay, so dumbfounded was the only person that showed up to my wedding with an unaccounted for guest. This motherfucker is so funny, dude. But, so, okay, look, to, to be fair, before I got married, I didn't know how that shit worked either, mm. okay? I didn't know that you had to, like, RSVP so soon and that you had to like say that you couldn't bring a guest if you didn't if you weren't specifically told you can bring a guest for the food yes because you because basically a wedding is you're paying for a date for 200 people yes every head is like money you know what i'm saying so it's like unless you are told that you can bring a guest you don't get a guest yes. you know what i'm saying because it's all accounted for and um I didn't know that until my homegirl Bree got married, and I went to her wedding, mm. and she was like, "Hey, um, make sure you RSVP," and I was like, "Oh shit!" And I didn't RSVP until like the last minute, and um, because they need to get everything accounted for, and I didn't know that until I had my wedding. So I had to text so many people like, "Yo, make sure you fucking RSVP so I I can get a head count," and I had to tell them, and they were like, "Oh shit, I didn't know." Fucking dumb, showed up. <laughs> With some woman that I had I had no idea who she was. <laughs> that girl looked like she was floating into the room, by the way. <laughs> we saw her. I was like, that is definitely Dumb's date. <laughs> but I always assumed that when you're invited to a wedding, before I knew that, that you just you could just bring someone. Yeah. Like, as, as a plus one. I didn't know that, right? And so Dumb felt the same way, I guess. And he just showed up with this girl who didn't have a seat, didn't have food, but they worked it out somehow where she was able to find a fucking seat. I don't know how they figured it out, but they did. Dumb's very crafty, dude. <laughs> that fool came in his cute little fucking Princess Leia little uh, little balls on his head. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I noticed. I was like, yo, what the fuck is with your hair, dude? <laughs> we were at an event recently, and I saw him. And he, right before I saw him, he goes, you can say some shit about my fucking hair, man. Every time I see you, you got to say some shit about me. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I love that guy, dude. No, shout out to Dumb. Dumb is a good yeah, dude. Yeah, he's so fucking funny, man. I've known Dumb Founder for so long. Oh. Yeah, but the food at your wedding was fucking amazing. I got the beef, of course. And usually when it happens with like wedding food, I'm always anticipating the worst food ever. Yeah. But the food was really fire, dude. Yeah, and, and look, I don't get, um when I order steak, I don't do filet mignons too often. Yeah. Um, But I so that was but that was my option at the wedding for steak. Oh, actually, not going to lie. Chia's filet mignon was perfect, 
Mine was a little over. Oh. More than I would like it to be. Not going to lie. Well, mine was perfect. Let me ask you. What were you going to say? No, go ahead. I was going to ask you this, David. So when did you first make the leap from well done to medium rare steaks? Oh, so here's the thing. <clears throat> I hated beef growing up. Hmm. I hated beef. I hated beef soup, beef anything. The only time I liked beef per se was like if I had it in like tacos or roast beef sandwich or whatever. Interesting. But so they, we, we talked about this in a mukbang. But yeah. Please so continue. Didn't like steak. Didn't like any of this shit. And it was only because of the way my mom cooked it. Mm -hmm. She cooked it always well done mm -hmm. because she didn't like or I don't know necessarily if I think about it now. It wasn't because she didn't like the blood. I think it's because I didn't like the blood. Okay. Right? And I was like, God, steak is so dry. It's the worst <laughs> fucking protein ever. And I was essentially mainly pescatarian growing up mm. because I like seafood. I could eat seafood every fucking day for the rest of my life, and I'm completely fine. Same. Um, I would always take, to be honest with you, I would take pork over beef um, because of its flavoring aspects, the way that it flavors soups. Um like a crispy pork belly, which which I'm gonna cook today. By the way, mm. I'm gonna do a crispy smoked pork belly today. Who are you cooking that for? Oh, I'm testing it out today. Oh, so I'm gonna test it out if it turns out really well, and I'm and I'm doing it on a, on a Weber kettle, which is a little hard because you have to control the temp. Mm. Um, but I want to do it without getting a digital pellet smoker, so I'm gonna do it myself. Oh my! So if it turns out good, guess who's coming over? <laughs> Me and Chia and Veda. There you go. <laughs> so. <clears throat> I didn't like beef for the longest time, and then I had medium rare steak for the first time, and I was like, "This shit's fire, dude!" Oh, so you had never even had it? No, because I just didn't want to see the blood inside of it. And then I'm like, "This shit dry as fuck." And my mom always used Montreal seasoning what is for that? the steaks. It's the classic steak seasoning that you see. It's like a, a shaker mm. bottle. It'll have like lemon pepper in there, yeah. peppercorns, garlic, uh, dehydrated okay. onion powder, salt, whatever. Okay. And that was the typical thing that I remember, which, by the way, I love Montreal seasoning. Mm. I know a lot of people are purists and they think salt and pepper is the only way to go. Mm. I don't mind a little extra shit on it. I don't mind. Yeah, I mean, it flavors it a little differently. A little Lowry's. Yeah, look, Lowry's steak seasoning, by the way, is the shit. I agree. I, I now, pepper, Lowry's seasoning. Yeah. The shit. Yes. Oh, I've made the mistake of salt, pepper, and Lowry's, and it gets a little too salty. Yes, 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 yes. So that's 100% the best way to go. Yeah, Lowry's is, is already salty <laughs> enough as it is. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would take that, and I ha remember I had the, the first bite I've had of like a medium rare steak. At first, I was like, oh, this is a little weird. And I was like, this shit moist as fuck. Mm -hmm. This is really fucking good. Mm -hmm. Ever since then, medium rare. And I went back to trying medium after. I'm like, no, 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 no. Mid rare. I've put on different homies through my times of living mm -hmm. onto medium rare steaks. I put on Super Ego, who was like, you know, used to get it well done, and then like one day I just He's tried- only to... used to asada, that's why. Yeah, exactly, right? And that's the thing about it is too, is um, well, my mom has been doing steaks bloody since I was a little kid. That's crazy. I've never heard Asian people doing that though. Really? Yeah, they always cook it well. Well, because like even with like Korean food or even a lot of Asian cuisine, yeah. like beef is a flavoring component. Like you'll have it in a stew, right? Mm. But you're eating everything else and the beef bones is what kind of flavors the broth, mm -hmm. but that's not like the main ingredient. And I think like the American palate switched up a lot of Asian food now because it's a lot more abundant. Like California, by the way, is like the epicenter of produce, mm. right? So even for a lot of people out there who go to Korea or they go to other places, like I've had multiple friends who went to Vietnam and they remember having really delicious meals, like authentic Vietnamese meals. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that they said was that the ingredients, however, in California, at certain restaurants are way better. Really? Just because we're in Napa Valley. Mm. We have all these all this produce and vegetables. That's what a lot of people don't know is that because we have such high access to high ingredient food at a cheaper cost, we get we technically have better quality food here. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that from multiple people. I'm talking about over a dozen people said that. Yeah, bro. Even like look, my mom used to do the steak so like low key rare. She would bring it out and she'd be like, wait. Don't eat that yet. That might not be done enough. If you uh. Take it back, cook it a little more. So I was always kind of used to bloody steaks. But also, uh, for everyone watching, um, if you are freaked out by a medium rare steak, it's not blood that is leaking out. It's actually um, riboglobin? Hemoglobin? No, it's not hemoglobin. It's another globin. Let me Google it real quick. Um, <laughs> Riboflavin. It's, like a, it's, it's, it's another globin. Um, and it is not actually blood. It is just a substance that comes out when you cook the meat because, because the, because the protein is bled out before. 
Right? Exactly. Because yeah. or else, like, you're not going to fucking cut into a, a piece of meat and it starts, like, gushing blood. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. The blood's gone already, guys. So it's like, it's not blood if that freaks you out. If this helps you. Um, so, okay, hold on. What is the... The only, there are certain cuts of steak too, depending on what it is and the process that you're cooking. Having it well done or cooked more than medium is better. For example, if you guys have ever had a flat meat or skirt steak, if you have mid rare, it's the chewiest piece of steak ever. But once you get it to medium, it's so fucking tender. Okay, myoglobin. Myoglobin. Myoglobin looks like blood on your plate because, like hemoglobin, the iron in myoglobin turns red when it is exposed to oxygen. That's why muscle tissue is red when it comes time. Oh, that's why muscle tissue is red when it comes con- when it comes time to cook your steak. Sorry, I've been drinking soju. When it comes time <laughs> to cook your steak, the myoglobin will darken as it's exposed to heat, and the meat loses its moisture. So it's not blood. The most annoying comment that people get when you cook a steak. I don't want to say prop- properly. I say to my preference, mm-hmm. right? Because if you <laughs> like well done meat, fuck it, whatever. Yeah, that's your thing. I agree. And they go, oh. Why don't you just get it with this heart beating already? Why don't you suck the left side of my fucking nut? Yeah, suck his fucking nut, you dumbass bitch. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then look up at me as you do it because I like <laughs> eye contact. I love it. I love eye contact. When you don't get eye contact, it's like, oh, you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> or, but what's kind of cool about no eye contact is you can imagine it's anybody, dude. Oh, you're you're. All right. <laughs> All right, Chia. <laughs> when it's just hair falling down, you're like, oh, this could be anybody. You know what I've been doing recently? <laughs> this is a little weird. <laughs> what she said. Is that uh, I've been watching like these old shows, right? Okay. And obviously these people are like now in their 60s or 70s, but I'm like, I wonder what they looked like naked back in the day. Yeah. And I'll look a photo, and there's like nude photos of them. Yeah. I'm like, holy Betty shit. Betty White has nudes. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> Betty White. You can Google Betty White's nudes and Yo, she has I'm nudes. Sorry. I'm not going that far <laughs> that old, bro. That's too much. Too much. No. <laughs> do it. Bro, Susan B. Anthony <laughs> has fucking nudes, bro. <laughs> okay. We'll cut to a break real quick. <laughs> Hey guys, this episode of Dudes Behind the Foods is brought to you by GoodyBrand.com. Tim here, just popping in to remind you that what's a better Christmas gift than some fly-ass clothes? I mean, GoodyBrand.com, we got new hats. Uh, Count your blessings. We got beanies. We got new flannels. We got all types of new gear. So go to GoodyBrand.com and check it out. Hold on a second. Why are you looking Bring it up? back. We're rolling. We're rolling. Penny White has nudes, dog. Because I was like, yo, okay, so so people <laughs> whenever people ask me, like, who's your hall pass? Okay, I'll give I'll give real answers, but then I like I like to give a bullshit answer and I'll be like, yo, Betty White. Which is also kind of a real answer because if Betty White was down, I'm down, okay? <laughs> but one one day I was like, let me see if Betty White has nudes. And she legit has fucking nudes from when she's like 20 something, dog. <laughs> That's a bit much. By the way, Betty White turns a hundred in 2022. Is Betty White still alive? Yes, fool. Of course you would know. You're jacking off to her every night. <laughs> I'm not jacking off. I'm looking up her tasteful news. I'll show you right now. Betty White's hilarious too, by the way. Um, Betty White is so great, and um, she is uh, just an icon, and I love her. And if she was ever down, then I'm a hundred percent down. And here is, uh, let me show you her nudes. Uh, look at her, look. Oh my God, I can't wait to look at Betty White fucking naked. Black and white, I love Lucy nudes, dude. <gasps> why is she naked? What do you mean why? Because she's a bad bitch? Oh, she has the puffy nipples. Yes, which I love. You're a puffy nipple man, huh? I fucking love the puffy nipples. I remember the first time I saw Puffy Nipple. I uh-huh. was a little shocked. I was like, these are different. Yeah, but they're great. There's so many photos of her nude. There's a lot. That's what I'm saying. What got you to look up nude photos of Betty White, you sick fuck? I was curious one day, and I was like, look, I was like, 
Betty White is a bad bitch, right? And I was like, people, like I said before, like I answered in previous, when people asked me like, who, what celebrity would you smash? And I would, I would always say Betty White as kind of a half joke, but like also like low key kind of serious. And one day I was like, I wonder how she looked as a youngin, who, super pretty, of course. And I was like, I wonder if she has nudes. And then I looked and she has nudes. That's a weird connection, bro. <laughs> Have you seen that photos of like Kamala Harris with a uh, with a what's it, with, I think it's Joe the R and B singer. I think she used to date him or some shit like that. <laughs> um, no, no, Montel Jordan. Montel Jordan. Yeah, the most fucking random thing ever. <laughs> what the fuck was she doing dating Montel Jordan? Um, you know, people live lives and things happen. <laughs> I just don't understand why you looked up. <laughs> you know who has fire ass news though? Actually, who? <laughs> fucking Aunt Jemima, bro. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I tell you what, <laughs> Betsy Ross, dude. Betsy. <laughs> uh, okay, so I kind of have this thing where it's like I randomly will just look up everybody's nudes. Like I look up people to see if they have nudes, and ninety percent of the time they have nudes. You know, you know. Have you ever uh, kind of like uh, looked back and thought about this shit? Where um, you know, when Bill Clinton was getting head by Monica Lewinsky, yeah, and it was such a big deal. Yeah. Why? <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> fucking dope. Um. No, I mean. It was a big deal because it was he was cheating, but like, but even I remember back then, people feeling like, oh yo, Bill is the man for this shit. Like it wasn't a big deal. He's getting to, his dick sucked in the Oval Office, bro. bro. How amazing is that? Here's what's funny, dog. Okay, so my senior project. So in my, in my high school, every senior has a senior project that they have to do before you graduate. Yeah, before you graduate. And people were doing shit on, like, regular shit, right? Like, they're doing their projects. So I'm like, I don't know. Like, oh, um, <clears throat> people need to recycle more or whatever. My I my senior project, here was my thesis. That the objectification of women in hip-hop made it so that people viewed Bill Clinton's adultery as something cool and not something to be look down upon that's actually pretty fucking genius dude <laughs> i did mine on um childhood trauma and hmm. abuse hmm. and i don't even know how i got to it but basically one of the biggest things that i saw was, was it was like a lot of the the percentage of children who get trauma is, is by parental mistakes that they didn't know about hmm. for example that's how i found out that eric clapton um child fell out the window right right and i that's how i don't know why i did that for my senior senior thesis or senior project I, I also I'm looking back now like why did I do such a fucking complex issue when I could have just did shit. But like that's that. lightweight uh, uh, insight into your genius as a human being. I agree because that's pretty. F- <laughs> hey, fuck you. That's pre- that's pretty fucking nuts. Yeah, and, and you like, actually cared. I literally remember the day I was like I I told my 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 teacher my thesis, Mr. Aria. Shout out to Mr. Aria, he was fucking cool. Um, and everyone in my class was like, "What the fuck?" But like people, but my 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 teachers appreciated that I was, it was creative. To, yeah, yeah. And then you started to showing him the hip hop videos of the, the white lady dancing. <laughs> this is how hip hop people dance. Yeah, it's like a hit hit hit. <laughs> I love that. Th- that's hip hop. That's hip hop. <laughs> they got to do it with attitude, like yo. <laughs> and I'm in. And I'm out. <laughs> here's a here's a fun story about Mr. Oria, uh, who was my um, uh, 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 AP. No, not AP, not AP. It was um, whatever. Some fucking honors adva- class. Advanced English. Yeah, honors English class. He also taught DJ Quick. What? Yeah. Uh, he used to teach at a school in Compton, and DJ Quick was one of his students. That's pretty fucking amazing. And I always thought that was fucking cool. There's always like these teachers too that kind of like change your life. There was a guy in high school, uh, Mr. Pedersen. Shout out to Mr. Pedersen; he's retired now. Out uh, in, if you ever had Mr. Pedersen as a teacher when you went to Florin High School, you already know how fucking dope he was. But uh, a couple, I think it was a year before he retired, I went to go visit him with my with my best friend uh, Gabo, mm-hmm. and he was telling me about how the attitude of parents and children are changing a lot now. Mm-hmm. So before it was like. If you have discomfort, you can persevere through it and you can become stronger. But a lot of parents are coming in now and coddling their kids. Mm, so, so they're f- not dis- un- like discomfort, like uncomfortable at all. Yeah, they yeah. just their parents don't want their kids to be uncomfortable. For yeah. example, there's a the, in your honors English class, there's a certain section where you have to do public speaking. Mm. And a parent came in and complained and say, my child is uncomfortable doing this. Ugh. It's like, this is a part of the curriculum. And not only that, it's a part of life. Exactly. And he yeah. was shot. And I think that's probably the reason why he wa- also wanted to retire a little earlier he goes i can't be a part of this anymore so there, for example 
there was a, a student that came in and the one thing I loved about Mr. Pedersen is that he would roast us, mm. right? He would teach us and he would roast us and he made, he kind of balanced that good boundary between student and teacher and then also a companion. Mm -hmm. And so this kid comes in and he's signing up for his AP English class and you have to fill out a form or whatever and he drops it off and he looks at this kid and he goes, did you write this? He goes, yeah. He goes, have you ever thought about investing into a typewriter or... <laughs> <laughs> like, because his handwriting was so fucked up, and this kid looked pissed, and he stormed out. Mm. And he looked at me, and I was there. And he looked at me, he goes, "This is what I have to deal with. Like these kids, they don't joke anymore. Everything mm. is so such a personal attack to them." Mm. He's like, "I remember when I used to make fun of you every day." Yeah. I was like, "I know, Mr. Pesci. I cried when I went home all the time." <laughs> no, but they don't. They don't want to. Have a relationship with their teachers anymore? Yeah, man, it's stupid, bro. These kids are getting weak. Bro. Yeah, come on, man. Let your that was the most fun part coming in and then fucking letting your teacher. He even let me do this thing where we had an assignment where we all had to do poetry, right? And my poetry assignment, I actually did it about how much I love food, mm. and I made fun of somebody else who's doing poetry about deep shit. <laughs> and, I, and the whole poetry that I did was making fun of him, and that he was cracking up laughing. That's great, yeah. and I got a fucking A. Of course, I loved it. I had some great teachers in my day. Mr. Carlin, rest in peace, Mr. Carlin. He died a couple years ago. My drama teacher. Oh. <clears throat> when I first went to Paramount High, um, this was the first time I was in a new school where I didn't know everybody, mm -hmm. right? And then I started to question myself because I had been going to school with people who I'd known my whole life, so I was, like, comfortable, right? And then I went to Paramount High, and I was like, oh, shit. I'm not as comfortable anymore. So I wrote a whole fucking, like, they used to do a lot of, like, free writes, just write whatever's on your mind. I was in drama class, and I wrote a whole thing about, like, am I actually who I think I am? Or was I only funny? Was I only a class clown because I was comfortable? Like, now that I'm around new people, am I actually, like, super insecure? I wrote a whole Ooh. thing about it, right? And then so Mr. Carlin read this shit, and he was like, Yo, there's a talent show coming up, putting on the hits, Paramount High. I'm going to make you host it. And he was like, I'm going to make you and this senior girl. I was a sophomore. He's like, I'm going to make you and the senior girl host it. And I was like, uh, for real? He was like, yeah, you're going to host it. And I was like, uh, all, right, all right. And all right. So I remember I hosted that. I co-hosted that fucking show. I was brand new at that school. I didn't know anybody. And I was feeling super insecure. But I hosted shit. I was bullshitting. I was like improv because like one of the acts couldn't go up right away. Um, it was like a... And this was before I was around any like, uh, like you know, Paramount High was mainly Mexican kids, and there was one of the one of the acts was like a mariachi group, and I remember being like, "Yo, y'all ready for some mariachi?" <laughs> and then everyone was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "All right, well, y'all gotta wait because they're not ready yet, right?" And everyone laughed. Mm -hmm. But the next day, or the next Monday, I went to school, and that was the first time the fucking like the like the, all the cholo kids were like. And hey, you're fucking funny, fool. Nah, that's tight. This fool's fucking funny. And I and now I was like, oh shit, because Mr. Carlin put me in an uncomfortable position and like had some fucking faith in me, you know what I'm saying? He really put me outside of my comfort zone and I was able to be like, oh shit, this is who I am, you know? Even when I'm not comfortable, you know? See, that's cool though. Like you kind of uh assume the the funny person, live person role. I think when I was in high school, I did the opposite where I was trying to be something that I wasn't, right? Mm. So uh, I started doing stand up when I was like 16. Okay. Right? Uh, <clears throat> just off and on talent shows or whatever. Nothing comedy clubs, I was too young. Mm -hmm. But I think I wanted to be a cool kid really bad, right? So I did a lot of like stupid shit that I wasn't really comfortable with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or that's why I think a big part of the reason why I wanted to go into music was because it would give me attention in the way that I liked. Mm. But I was never a cool musician guy. I was mm. always a goofy fucking dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think because I tried that for so long, it just didn't feel like a right fit. And then when I full fledged went into comedy, I was like, this is who I am. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm not the cool fucking. Yeah, because you don't have to be try to be cool. Exactly. I don't have to think about what I have to dress about. And so what a lot of people don't know is that when I first started YouTube, if you look at all those videos, I did my best to make sure that every single shirt that I owned was a, a fucked up free shirt. <laughs> Right, <laughs> because the the one of the freeing things about stand up comedy was that you don't have to look a certain way. Right, you just have to be funny. Yeah, if anything, the funny looking dudes were the funnier dudes. Exactly. So yeah. every shirt, if you watch in the first two three years of my videos, it's all free shirts, car wash shirts, uh, <laughs> fucking marathon running shirts, okay. a given shirt from like my friend who went to Rwanda, he gave me a free shirt, <laughs> and it I would look as stupid as possible because mm. it was very liberating not having to look or be a certain way, and I could just be my fucking self. Right, right, and right. And it was dope. But after a while, I realized, hey, this is not giving me any pussy. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> like at a certain point you can only get you so far like right. and then you kind of just like okay I'm, I'm kind of assuming this role too much this joke went a little too far <laughs> and now i actually have to buy decent clothes but yeah that was the thing too it's like I, high school had those moments where you kind of like figure out who you are yeah and you know when you find that thing it fucking feels so good it's like yeah this is who i am and also shout out to michigan mitsu who signed she has a different name now that she's married i forget what it is but she signed in my yearbook, and this literally is like fucking super simple statement, but resonates in me to this day. Where she signed my yearbook, and she was like, Tim, you're so funny, you're so talented, but you need to remember that if you don't put in the work, all that will get you nowhere. Ooh, and I so good. always think about that. You know what I'm saying? Whenever I'm feeling like fucking like not motivated, or I feel like I'm not, I don't have shit going on, I'm like, yes, remember what Michigan Mitsu said? Um, yeah, I might have, I might be funny, but I need to fucking put in the work, you know? Well, let me tell you something. That's a good way to end this podcast. Hell fucking yeah. Hell yeah. So all you lazy fucks out there that <laughs> remind you of David So, <laughs> don't do what I do. <laughs> Yesterday, I ate a pot of ramen and I fucking laid it on my belly and Where, I ate it. Where'd you get the ramen from? Oh, let me tell you something. Korean supermarket ramen. Korean mm. ramen is the best. Is it? It's the one in the packets. Mm. We'll talk about this on another podcast. I actually, podcast. I actually prefer packaged Korean ramen than actual real ramen. Damn. Okay, yeah. next episode is getting spicy. Yeah. We're talking ramen, Korean ramen, Korea number one. Korea number one, Japan negative 7,000. <laughs> Thailand, okay. <laughs> uh, boat noodles from Thailand. Uh, make sure y'all get some. Make, thank you for watching the Dudes Behind the Foods. I'm Tim Chantarongsu. And I'm David So. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like us on iTunes and whatever uh, thing you're using to listening to us. Share with your friends because you know there's not a single food podcast out there that's as fucking good as this one. That's motherfucking right. Bye. Love you. Yeah.